Well, hello again. Now, you've just missed Eddie Howe leaving St. James's Park there behind us. Yeah, he, uh, he looked awfully pleased, and so right he should be, but he's away back home now to watch a rerun of this match. Now, I dare say when he watches it back, it will be, uh, who's that on my shoulder there? There's Dan, you all right? Anyway, Dan Byrne is all right, uh, and yes, yeah, so he should be. I end up leading my match report on him so much for uh, this nonsensical tradition, routine of not celebrating against your old club. Either he'd forgotten he ever played for Brighton or he just didn't care, and I'm guessing it was the latter. Bearing in mind it was, it was his goal that put Newcastle tuna up and gave them what we thought was a cushion going into the second half. And, you know, from my perspective, sat there as a, as a reporter, Newcastle are leading 2 0. You're able to, to commit your report to Newcastle being one victory away from the Champions League. They then go and concede six minutes into the second half. And while the night finishes on a high in, for Newcastle and it, it's 4 1, and the scoreline perhaps suggests that it was rather comfortable in the end, I'll be honest, and I'm always here, this isn't a negative, I'm always here to, uh, to give what I, what I believe is an honest appraisal. I thought for 15, 20, 25 minutes in the second half there, they lost control, and before Dan Byrne walked down there behind us, that was the point I was going to make. Eddie's away back to watch the game, and he'll watch it in the comfort of, of knowing how it finished. But honestly, trust us, we're sat there in the press box, and we can see how just down, uh, just down beneath us. And during that second half, he wasn't happy. He was far more agitated than he ever gets with his own players and with the officials. Again, I don't want that to sound like a, a negative, but when you're invested as a reporter and you know that one goal, if Brighton go and equalise, you've got to, and you're working the very tight deadlines on these night games, you're going to have to rip up what you've written because it does uh, draw compared to a victory tonight for Newcastle. It did massively change the the tone of of what us guys would be reflecting. So, so yeah, it was uh, it was nervy, and you could tell that by the manner in which. Eddie celebrated the goals. He's not normally one for, for letting go and letting loose like that, but he did here, uh, and I think that was twofold. You know, one, the relief given Brighton had finally found a way to attack after, after an awful first half, I thought, from them, and two, more so, what the goal means. And what does it mean? What do those late goals mean? Well, it means that Newcastle are now only one victory away from the Champions League. It could be that the comeback here against Leicester on Monday and Aston Villa have already done the job for them at Liverpool. I think that's unlikely. I still think they're going to have to get that, that one victory themselves. But the, the manner in which they finished the game there tonight, uh, the mood of the crowd, just everything about the occasion come the end, you know, they will be one of, one of Leicester or Chelsea and they will be playing Champions League football next year. Now, how did they achieve that tonight? I thought the, the two fullbacks were absolutely excellent. I thought Kieran Trippier, uh, I'll be honest, he was shortlisted for Premier League Player of the Year today, and I was surprised by that. While he's been good, while he's been excellent, I wouldn't really have him as, as Newcastle's player of the season, uh, you know, let alone as the, the sole Newcastle player on that list for, for Premier League, uh, the Premier League's best. But saying all that, he was tremendous tonight. I thought that was his best performance for a long time. His deliveries from set pieces was... Uh, it was excellent. The first two goals came from that Dan Burns header and the, the, the own goal from Undav during a start in which I thought Newcastle again, you know, they found a way of starting well here, haven't they? Tottenham, Arsenal, Southampton, you know, I said after the Arsenal game, they lost 2-0 and they finished on a little bit of a downer. But, you know, don't forget during the first 10, 15 minutes, they were, they were fantastic. They were like that again there tonight. And Brighton, quite why they continued to play the ball out from the back. It was almost as if they were working off the understanding that five passes inside that goal mouth equated to a goal. It was it was absolute madness. You do not do that against a team such as Newcastle who pressed so relentlessly. I mean, the, the trigger for Newcastle's press was just basically as simple as whenever Brighton had the ball. And I thought during that, that first half hour, I thought they were, they were excellent. Dan Byrne gets his goal on the back, you know, not just that as well, and the celebration in front of the, the stands there in which he, he sat as a boy, you know, so right he should. I think it's madness when players don't celebrate against the, the former club, and, and good on him for doing that. Uh, but I just thought his overall performance as well, I thought him and Trippier were, were Newcastle's two best players. They then, as I said, they, they then lose a little bit of control in midfield in the second half, and, and <clears throat> Eddie Howe said as much himself, you know, that it wasn't it wasn't comfortable viewing, and it felt a little bit like down at Leeds on Saturday when they had that lead, and you you wouldn't have been at all surprised. There was just that little spell, wasn't there, where you thought Brighton might nick one, but then Miguel Almiron, who I thought again was another one who was back to, to somewhere close to his best tonight, to to have the energy and the drive to beat his man, 
just down there behind us and find a way to that through ball for, for Callum Wilson to go away and score. And then Wilson turns provider for Bruno Gomorrah, who, again, listen, I didn't have his best game, but fair play, he is playing almost on one leg at the moment for him to, to find the energy to... To, to, to pop up there sort of 10 yards out get on the the end of Wilson's pull back and, and make it 4-1 and this place just just lifted off at the end didn't it and the home fans were singing about going to Italy now I've just got back from Italy I was there during the week uh, lucky enough to be covering the Champions League semi-final second leg between both Milan clubs and honestly I would say Newcastle even now before a summer of in likely investment I would say Newcastle are better than both of those and one of them into Milan are heading to the, the Champions League final in Istanbul next month. Now, right. newsy items to emerge from tonight. It looks like Joe Willock's season could be over. He's left here on crutches, uh, a hamstring problem. I wouldn't expect to see him again in the final two matches. And Joe Linton as well took a, took a pretty heavy kick and is now rated as doubtful for, for Monday. Who would come in? Well, the light in midfield now, aren't they? We saw Louis Miley on the on the bench tonight. He wouldn't start, but I think it would probably be a, an Elliot Anderson who who would come in for his, I think it would be his first league start of the season. So, so yeah, we'll know more from Eddie tomorrow morning. A quick turnaround here. We're going to have a, uh, time for a quick pint in the strawberry. And in a few hours' time, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be back up at Benton seeing Eddie for his pre-match press conference. Thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It all helps with the channel. The link to my match report is below. Uh, Daily Mail report tonight, which, uh, which yeah, thankfully, the tone I'd adopted after an hour, I was able to stick to 190, but there was a period where I was, I was just as nervous as, as Eddie Howe down there on the touchline. So, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I think we'll be bringing you a few of these from, uh, from foreign shores next year. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.